Hi, everyone. Welcome to the A-List assignment. This is my gift to you within the vision sequence, and it's actually one of the introductory elements. So before we even set goals, we have to believe that we can actually achieve them, and especially when it requires every ounce of our faith to even take the tiniest steps to move forward. I had some major challenges before heading into this recording. So it really takes a lot of, of effort. You really have to have the right mindset if you're going to go ahead and achieve your goals because life is not always going to cooperate. Life is not always going to tell you, go ahead. Life is actually going to push back and you have to push back against life. And that requires serious clarity and that requires adherence to your vision and to your goals. So the A-list assignment is actually five steps that I want to give you that would put you back in the center of your vision. Because at the end of the day, no one is going to be able to achieve your vision besides you. So I really want to give you this before you even enter into the vision sequence, before you even begin to start setting goals. What is it about your mindset that you might need to tweak? What is it about your, your way of thinking about yourself, what you are capable of doing, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about your God-given abilities? Do you even recognize what you're good at? So that's what we're going to be talking about for the next few days. If you've ever said, I could never do that. If you ever said, I'm just, just, and you follow that with a belief that minimizes your value, the A-list assignment is going to change the way you look at yourself. And it's going to help you to show up with even more confidence in who you actually are, not as people expect you to be. Um, I'm listening to my dog barking. <laughs> outside right now and had I not been completely devoted to this vision had I not been completely sure of what it is that I'm presenting here tonight and in the subsequent weeks as you go through the vision sequence I would have said forget it because my dog is always barking so <laughs> I apologize to those of you who find it distracting, but this is a part of my life. And I want you to see that no matter what, you need to keep pushing through. Things are not always going to be perfect, but you need to keep pushing through. Your vision is worth it. Your dream is worth it. So faith in your dream is essential to your success. And that's what I was just talking about. God can't bless the version of you that you're pretending to be. So if you're pretending to be perfect, you really don't need him, right? So I want you to really get in touch with who you are. I want you to get in, tr in touch with the truth of where you are on your journey, because there is no shame in being a beginner. There is no shame in being unsure. You know, um, we all have difficulties. We all have different stories. We all have different things that we're facing, but I want to help you become the version of yourself who will be your own cheerleader when nobody but you believes in your vision. Trust me, you're going to need it. So when I was doing all the things and I was showing up strong for everyone else, I struggled to define my own desires and I would set goals and I would fall short and I wouldn't just disappoint myself I would disappoint the people around me who were depending on me right and that's a hard place to be because especially if you want to please people you end up in a state of of um low self-worth because you're placing your worth in what other people believe you to be and who other people want you to be and if you're not measuring up then you you lose a sense of who you are you lose your identity because they're not pleased with you and if they're not pleased with you then then who are you right so 
I worked really hard, like I was saying, to please people. I wasn't pleasing myself, and I know I certainly wasn't pleasing God. And I did everything I could to be dependable and to be loyal and to be kind and loving and supportive. Those are the things that we're supposed to do, right? And I sometimes say when we say should, we need to remember that should is a big word. And I have shoulded myself into some situations I did not know how to get out of. And I don't know if you can relate to that. You know, when you, if you tell a lie, you have to keep lying to convince others that it's true. And people pleasing is just like that. You have to keep doing the things they want to keep the relationships working. Meanwhile, a little part of you is dying inside with everything you do because deep down you know that you aren't being true to yourself and it doesn't matter if it's your boss or your boyfriend any relationship that requires you to show up in a way that feels like you're faking it is gonna leave you feeling fake your vision can't become a reality unless you believe that it can and you won't believe it can until you define for yourself what success looks like to you not to other people if you don't define your own version of success, what are you believing in? And how will you know when you achieve it? Success doesn't happen by accident. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be intentional about what you want. Commit to doing the work to make your dreams your reality. So I'm going to tell you a story. I created my first workshop in 2009. But I didn't actually lead one until January of 2020. It took me 11 years to drink my own Kool-Aid. It's some good Kool-Aid. I sat on my potential for so long. And I spent years building other people's visions at school, at work, in my family, with my friends, serving in my church. But I put my own dreams and desires on the back burner. I put everyone else on the A list except myself. Does that sound familiar? In our efforts to do our best for those who are important to us, we can sometimes lose sight of the fact that we are important too. So if nobody told you or you haven't told yourself, know that you are important and that your dream matters so much that if you don't put yourself on the A-list, your efforts to show up for others will always fall short. No matter how loud life calls, showing up as you is the only way that you can succeed. I have learned that you cannot cancel your calling and life provided many opportunities along the way for me to use my natural gift of pulling out the best in people and empowering them to discover, define, and deliver that version of themselves to the world. I thought that mentoring workshop thing I developed in 2009 was just an idea. I wanted to create a program where women in my church could forge relationships that would allow the older women to pass on their knowledge to the next generation, and they in turn would be empowered to do the same for those who came after and never executed it but it kept coming back. It wouldn't let me rest. And over the years, it evolved into what I'm presenting to you today. What's the idea in the back of your mind that you aren't taking seriously? And it keeps coming back to you, nudging you, nagging you, asking to be acted on, or at least acknowledged. Are you telling yourself you don't have time or it's too late? or that nobody will be interested? Have you tried and failed too many times and just gave up? What if you were almost there? What if it wasn't so much the plan that wasn't working, but that your mind was working against the plan? In the beginning of 2020, I felt compelled to sit with myself and peel back layers of limiting beliefs that were preventing me from walking in my purpose. I had just completed my own vision board when I was asked to facilitate a vision board workshop for the women's ministry at my church. And it was interesting because this was our last event before lockdown. And I am so glad 
I am watching women step up into new roles and leading with their gifts, seeing purpose evolve right before my eyes. Just two years ago, I wasn't a two-time author. I posted random thoughts on my Instagram page, trying to give an encouraging word here and there, but I didn't have a plan. And now I'm here talking to you, telling you with all the faith I have that if I can learn how to harness my God-given gifts and create a plan for my life that I'm actually following through on, that I'm actually proud of, that I don't have to feel like I'm selling myself short to achieve, you can do it too. I want you to get out of your own way and to stop building a story to support your suffering. You don't have to stay stuck. You don't have to stay stagnant. You can break free, breathe, be you, and achieve your dreams. When I was developing the vision sequence coaching program, I quickly realized there was some pre-work that needed to be done. The vision sequence helped me when I was at a point in my life to create a vision, but I wasn't always there. So the A-list assignment is what helped me to get to the point where I could even conceive of a vision for my life. What I did first was create affirmations. And it was these affirmations that fueled the vision so I was able to execute and create my life and business. My first affirmation was this. I appreciate my attributes. I affirm my value. I articulate my dreams. I act authentically and I access abundant life. I felt like I had to choose and I had to work harder to become more productive or try to make the best of my situation. And after I reflected a lot, like I was just saying, it wasn't the situation. I had to make a decision. Well, I had to make a few decisions. I had to decide that I was not going to shrink, that I wasn't going to play it safe. I was not going to set reasonable goals. I'm going to take up the space that God has created for me. I'm going to take up all the space that God has created for me. I am going to step out in faith because there is no risk when you're walking in purpose. I decided that I am going to be true to God. I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to evolve and I won't resist the change that it takes to get to the next level because I heard it said recently that the top of one level is the bottom of the next so we're in a continual state of evolution and looking at our goals and looking at our vision, we need to accept that. And we need to accept that once we have achieved one thing, that there's more to do because we were never meant to be stagnant. And that's, that's the beautiful thing, I think. So Realizing that when I show up in my own life, I give everyone I touch the best version of me. I want to teach you what it took me 11 years to learn so that you don't have to wait as long as I did to live your dream. Your vision is waiting on you. What if the dormant dream that you said would never come true? actually did what is the dormant dream that you said would never come true what if you committed the rest of this year to resetting your vision so you don't walk into another year with the same mindset that kept you stuck what would that unlock for you what level could you get to that was previously out of reach and how do you stand in the light of your own dream when you're in the shadow of someone else's. Dimming your light for others to shine robs you and them of the best version of life. By being fully you, 
you're better equipped to help and serve others. And hiding isn't humble. And seeking only to please people prevents you from walking in your purpose. Because when you're really walking in your purpose, not only are you going to please the right people, but you're going to serve the right people too. Have you ever had that feeling that you aren't yourself while at the same time not being sure who you really are? That's crazy. So then you make up an acceptable version of yourself and you show that to the world and they love it. They love that version of you. So you show up as that person every single day until you're sick of being someone you're not but you're afraid of losing what you created with that persona. So now you're stuck. You're stuck in a box that you built with your own hands. Now what? I want you to sit with that thought for a minute. If you feel trapped, I want you to own where you are and own the fact that you reached a destination you willingly traveled to. There are very few things that happen to us that are out of our control, aside from natural disasters and terrible acts by wicked people who prey on the helpless. We are very much in charge of where we are in life and taking ownership of failures, reflecting and gaining insight from past mistakes is a powerful way to harness and focus your ability to take ownership of your future. When I acknowledged that bad decisions were the catalyst for the circumstances I didn't like, I was empowered to decide, to think, and act in ways that would create circumstances I did like. Did I change the world? No. Did I make a million dollars? No. Did I change my mindset? Yes. Did I start showing up confidently as my true self, regardless of the situation and the opinions of others? Yes. Your authenticity is the code that unlocks your destiny. When I stepped back into my own skin and owned who I was and also who I had the potential to become, my world changed. And yes, the circumstances change. Because when you exercise your God-given right to be yourself, your divine authenticity cannot be denied. You enter every room in the fullness of who you are, not apologizing for your beliefs, not doubting your abilities, not devaluing your worth, not comparing yourself to others, and not questioning why you got a seat at the table. So I'm going to give you five keys that can help you transform the way you look at life and ultimately shift the direction of where your life is heading. These are the keys that will unlock your ability to authentically and unapologetically show up as who you are while becoming who you need to be to reach your goals. I say that because if you're here, it's because you don't feel like you have it all figured out. I know when I developed the framework for this course, I wasn't, it wasn't because I had it all figured out and I wanted to teach others the way. It was because I was figuring out what I needed. And I knew if I was, others were too. So I encourage you over the next few days to always have pen and paper ready to write your aha moments, to write those things that really stand out to you and to write the answers to the questions that I'm going to pose to you. You don't want to lose these sparks of revelation because they're going to be pivotal to how you move forward. They act as bright spots in the darkness to help you find your way back to yourself. Have you been lost without understanding where you are. Like you, you just drive somewhere and you are not sure if you should make a left or a right. You just have no idea. 
So fortunately, in this modern age, we have navigation apps and you can tell us you are here and it shows us where here is in proximity to everything else. So where are you right now? Are you just beginning your journey or are you well on your way to the path to your purpose and just uncertain about a few forks in the road that you might have come to? We spend a lot of time on social media and we follow people that we see as larger than life, people who we admire and we want to be like. And that's great. Being inspired by someone who has accomplished a lot can help you see what's possible for you. But what if it reinforces doubts and insecurities that you already have? What happens then? If you're doing something that you can't stop, I encourage you to come back and listen to this at another time when you can be still because the A-list assignment is going to take a lot of soul searching. There are going to be questions and it's best if you write your answers down. It's even better if you come back in three months and write your answers down again because that's going to give you some insight into how you've grown. This is basically a masterclass, if I'm honest, and I'm giving it to you as a gift. And I invite you to give yourself the gift of your undivided attention. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Many of us have had our lives turned upside down in the last two years, and we're ready to go back to the way things used to be, to be comfortable again. But could it be that the upheaval in the last two years was the gift? Could it be that all that was uncovered by a global pandemic revealed what we needed to see? I know that's how it was for me. Lockdown gave me the opportunity to be still with God and with myself and revelation came like a flood. And I use that, that word purposefully because there were tears. Sometimes when you are faced with the truth of who you are, it's not the glowing revelation that you thought it would be. And some of it was painful, some of it was disappointing, but all of it was needed. And you might uncover some uncomfortable emotions during the A-list assignment. And I encourage you to let those feelings come. I don't want this to be something that's going to put you into a state of depression. And I'm going to share something with you. I had a coaching call recently and my coach recommended to one of the members of our group that she get therapy. And it's something that we often don't talk about. We think that we can fix things on our own. Um, and for some of us who are people of faith, we think that we can pray our way out of the situation. And I have such faith in God, but I believe that Christians can go to therapy also. So if you can, and if it's too much for you to handle, I encourage you, too much for you to handle on your own, I encourage you to seek out wise counsel, godly counsel, dare I say, and seek a professional if you need to. Because you can only be as successful as you are healed, right? And there are certain aspects of our past and our lives and our character that we're going to have to deal with in order to be truly successful. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I encourage you to journal about those thoughts. And um, I'm going to share a PDF and I will upload this um, shortly. It won't be today, but I will share a PDF that you can use as a guide that's going to help you. We've already gone into half an hour on this particular 
day and for those of you who want to move on I want to talk about something I spoke about recently on social media and I'm going to read a portion of scripture for you and it's numbers 13 verse 33 and it says and there we saw the giants the sons of Anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight how we believe we look to others often reflects how we see ourselves and there's no account of these men asking the giants what their opinion was of them there's no account of them taking a survey and yet they were convinced of what they looked like to these giants have you ever found yourself convinced of what you look like to others have you ever found yourself in a situation where you just know they're saying X, Y, and Z about you? You just know. Oh, they think I am. Oh, they think I'm this. They think I'm that, but they never told you. How do you know? This is what we do. We make up these stories in our heads because of the inadequacy that we feel. How do you see yourself? But most importantly, how does God see you? And for those of you who didn't catch it, this is a faith-based program. I could not be true to myself and I could not be true to the vision of what the vision sequence is without mentioning my faith without mentioning the revelation that has come through my faith so understand that that is going to be a part of the vision sequence so I encourage you in your prayer time to ask God to reveal to you what he says about you. I encourage you to search the scriptures for what God says about you. I encourage you to, to think about and to read about the plans and the purpose that he has for you. And he's not going to tell you that he wants you to be a doctor or a lawyer or a mail clerk. He's not going to tell you that. He's going to tell you about his promises and he's going to tell you about alignment and when you get that alignment, it's going to reveal to you what you should be doing. I firmly believe that because I am walking in it. When we shy away from the things that God is leading us to, we show what we believe. We show that we believe that we are inadequate. We show that we believe that we are not good in, in that area. And while that may be so in some instances, a lot of the time, many of us are running from purpose. A lot of you who are listening right now, you know that thing that is calling you. You feel it. You might not yet be able to define it, but you feel it. And I want to help you by the end of the vision sequence. I really want to help you to be able to not only define it, but to defend it. So that your dream is no longer defeated. Your dream is no longer delayed. And that you can really walk in purpose. And does this mean you're going to become a multimillionaire and you're going to save the world? No, it can be as simple as using your voice and being able to speak out in certain situations. It can be as simple as that. It can be as simple as finally dressing the way you want to dress and not the way other people are, are thinking that you should. It can be as simple as finally losing those 20 pounds because you're able to make up your mind 
and make a plan. It can be as simple as newlyweds figuring out how they want to raise their children, how they want to budget, where they want to live. The thing is, if you don't have a vision for your life, you're going to fall prey to everyone else who has a vision for your life. And that only leads to resentment and regret. Your vision is what empowers you to live your best life. Not wishing, not hoping, having an actual plan. But to have an actual plan, you need to get to the root and the truth of who you are. So the first assignment that I want to give you is to appreciate your attributes. Cherish who you are. Take stock of who you are. Take stock of your best qualities and your worst qualities. Take stock of your likes and your dislikes. Take stock of your strengths and your weaknesses. This is important. So today I'm going to give you a an overview. And then tomorrow we're going to go in deeper in each of these. We're going to take a day and we're going to go in deeper into each of these because I think they really all need their own time. So the second one is affirm your value. You are not insignificant. You are here on purpose and for a purpose. There is no mistake about your existence. And you have dreams and you have hopes and you have desires and they are valid. So the third thing is articulate your dreams. You need to be able to say to yourself, to God, and to everyone else what your vision is, what your dreams are, what your hopes are, to be able to speak it out loud unapologetically. You need to act authentically. That's number four. Because the real you is the only version of you who can achieve your dreams. The real you is the only version of you who can walk in your purpose. And then when you do these things, you can access abundant life. And I want you to believe that you can. And I want you to believe that there is an abundant life to be accessed. And note, I didn't say a perfect life. I said an abundant life. Because even in imperfection, and even with things not going as planned, this recording this evening didn't even go as planned. But I am so grateful in this moment to be doing what I'm doing. And if nothing else, it's shown me that I believe in my vision. Because if I didn't, I would have postponed it. And I believe that this is a divine moment, even with the dogs barking in the background, even with interruptions, even with this room not being as quiet as I would like. Even if my setup isn't completely perfect. Even if my face is a little too oily, this is a divine moment. And when we are obedient to the call that is on our lives, God meets us where we are at the appointed time. And that's where the blessing comes. So I want to leave you with this. 
appreciate your attributes, affirm your value, articulate your dreams, act authentically, and access abundant life. Welcome to your A-list assignment. The next session, we are going to start back at one and we're gonna appreciate our attributes. I'm gonna have a PDF available for you and you're gonna be able to download that PDF or at least follow through with it. And I encourage you to write, 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 write. Don't type, don't type. So I'm giving you some time to get a journal so you can write in your own handwriting and you can see what you believe about yourself and we can start making some shifts so that you can believe in bigger and better things and achieve your vision. Thank you so much for joining me. I am honored to partner with you to help you achieve your vision and I'll see you soon. Thank you.